take with that document um, that was shared out um, back in May, or you may have not seen, so then it would be to share out the essentials document um, that was created by curriculum and instruction and the TSSs. Um, but in order to do that, um, I want to make sure you have a little bit of background about me and where I'm coming from in this. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time in this, but it, it kind of sets the foundation for, um, for my background and where these ideas have stemmed from. Um, and I believe in my teaching philosophy, I have two sort of key factors that I believe are the key to education and embedded in my philosophy. And that is um, the professional, professional learning community and mindset. So those of you who know me probably could have named those without even thinking twice about them um, because they are ingrained in every professional development that I do um, and every work I do with teachers and everything. So just to kind of set the stage a little bit about where this comes from is the professional learning community um, idea is one I've been working on and researching for a long time. And it's set in the idea that a professional learning community is an entire school um, and it's an ongoing process. And that the school is, is kind of situated on these four pillars at the bottom, the mission, vision, values, and goals. And that within there and sets on top of that foundation are your interdependent collaborative teams. So each of you is probably a member of a team, whether they're functioning right now and how they're functioning right now could be a different issue for conversation. Um, but within those, you guys work collaboratively together for the betterment of your students and to um, improve their student achievement. And what I love so much about the PLC structure um, is that although a typical PLC is an entire school, the ideas behind a PLC can be run through a group of teachers or individually. Um, and so that's kind of where, um, where my baseline is for work with teachers. And within that, whether you're working together as a school, a department, or individually, there are four critical questions that should always be asked when you're planning. Um, what do we want our students to learn? How are we gonna know if they learned it? What are we gonna do if they did? And what are we gonna do if they didn't? And the reason I bring these up is because that first question, what do we want our students to learn, is essentially what those essential standards provided for us. Now, in my work um, with schools um, over the course of several of time, um, typically what happens is departments will kind of come up with these essential standards um, based on their feeder patterns, based on their data, but when COVID hit and we were kind of in this crisis mode, um, it, it was really essential with the, the loss of learning that hit. Um, it's going to be critical this year that our teachers are really, really focused on the essential standards for our students at our grade level or in our content. Um, and so we really wanna make sure that we are focused and we know exactly where we're going this year because we don't wanna get lost on our journey. Um, we don't want to start down a path and go, oh, wait, if I look at that document, it's a blue, which means it's not really something that it's going to cause any issues for our kids down the line. Or, oh, my gosh, that green has four greens in that domain of that common core standard, and I didn't even touch on it. So those essential standards are going to help us um, kind of get to those, those focal points. So um, this is... Um, the essential learning, um, the essential standards document. Um, so Jeannie in the comments, she shared um, this Google My Bitmoji classroom with you and the links are all connected on it. So if you click on that document, if you have not seen it, um, you now have, there it is. Um, and if you have seen it, the one that I included, it says math at the top, but it does have all content. So just a quick background on this document, it was created by the TSSs in CNI. Um, and this document has, you can see math is down there, K all the way up through Algebra 2. Um, it also has science, it has ELA, and it has social studies. Um, so myself and my colleagues were part of the math creation of that. If you have questions about other content, um, my contact information is on there and I can get you in touch with the person that can answer your questions about other contents besides mathematics. <laughs> um, we are happy to help you do that. But as I said, today, today we're kind of going to be looking at math examples. So if we look at this, um, every standard on here is color coded. Um, green being the essential standards, yellow being the very important standards, and the blue ones being the um, important standards. So 
the way we kind of look at that is the green are definitely the need to know. Those are the skills and the, the things your kids need to know and be able to do that should not be skipped this year in your planning. Um, so um, those are your, are your highlighted ones. The yellow ones are the very important ones are next on the list. Typically, what we find about the very important standards is that there are a lot of times they're the building blocks for the essential standards. So these are standards that on an SAT or when we had PARC um, may not be tested directly, but they may be things kids need to know in order to do an essential standard. So um, these are all color coordinated. Um, they're all color coordinated across content and across grade levels similarly. So green is your go. Green is, green is where we're looking at this. Um, now, for those of you um, that are high school, we are looking at um, the SAT. Um, for those of you that are middle school, um, we will have the PSAT for ninth graders and eighth grade algebra. Um, and then we have the NMSSA. I think I put the right number of letters in that assessment that the middle schools take. Um, middle schools also, you guys have also have the iReady um, and different assessments. So the process that I used today, again, was, was the blueprint from the SAT, but the process that I used for doing this would be the same for whatever your assessment is. So if I look at this essential standards document that I have here, that you'll see all these stars next to a standard, and each one of those stars represents it um, being mentioned in the SAT blueprint from, from, um, that Rhonda Davis put out from the assessment department. So you could go through and do the same thing with your grade level and your grade content for whatever standardized assessment you're responsible for um, within your content. If you don't have a standardized assessment that necessarily goes to your content, um, you can still do the next process that I'll get to in just one second. Um, so each of these stars represents um, an SAT alignment um, standard. So you can kind of see like some of these with Huge amounts of stars, lots of stars means very important, <laughs> essentially is what is what we're saying here. Um, so I thought it would be helpful to have those two documents for our secondary teachers, even our middle school teachers, because a lot of the standards, um, if we look down here at like our eighth grade math, um, you can see there are stars within the eighth grade standards. Um, the SAT math alignment actually goes down to, I think, sixth grade or fifth grade. I'm trying to think where I saw stars. Goes down to at least sixth grade. There's some stars um, in here as well. So even middle school teachers can kind of see where your kids are headed um, with the stars on this document and that those are standards that they're gonna hit several times coming up sixth through 12th grade. All right, so let's go back here. So that kind of gives you some idea of that essential standards document. And then the other document that is in here is this SAT math alignment. So if you're middle school or high school um, and you haven't seen this yet, I know our kids take the SAT um, in 10th grade, um, but as teachers previous to that, we wanna make sure they're prepared just as well as our 10th grade teachers do. Um, so this document shows all of the standards that are on the SAT. So the SAT is broken into four parts, part of algebra, problem solving and data analysis, additional topics, and passport to advanced math. And what Rhonda Davis in assessment has done is she has aligned um, all of these ideas to different common core standards, and then also linked them to practice SAT questions. So if we look at like this first standard here, and I go over here to click on this, and I open this, it will take me directly to a practice SAT release question that is aligned to the standard that it showed you. So you can see exactly what type of question goes with that standard. So it's a way to kind of help you, um, a way to kind of help you look at that, um, those ideas of what the standards mean. So, oops, sorry, wrong one. So what I did here is in order to crosswalk between the essential standards document and the SAT math alignment is I color coded. So as you scroll through here, you can see the green and yellow and red, just like on the essential standards document. So again, if you're, um, if you have a different assessment, um, most assessments have an alignment to the common core state standards or to the state standards, depending on your content. Um, so you can go through and kind of create a crosswalk 
um, between between your standardized assessment, whatever that is, and your and your standards. Um, and look at those essential standards that the district has established and look at how those are, those come across in your standardized assessment um, that you're responsible for. So those are the two documents. If you're secondary, as I said, um, whether you're middle school or high school, these are going to be documents that may help guide your instruction um, and lead you to some more purposeful um, understandings of where to make sure you cover this year. So that's kind of the um, so those are the two documents. So then what I did is um, because those practice release items are available, um, if your practice items are not available, you can always look at um, park items. I know we're not a park state anymore, but the park resources for math and ELA are phenomenal. So there's tons of practice problems that you could pull from there that are assigned to standards to give you some idea of what you're looking for. Um, I am not as familiar um, with I ready um, as I wish I was, I'm getting there, um, whether they have example problems or not. And then Rhonda Davis is in the process, I guess, NMSSA is coming out with some um, alignment documents. They have just not been released to the public yet. So when those come out, um, you know, I, I can work with um, people on that as well. But what I did for that is um, I created a document from there um where i went through and i looked at those practice um those sample release items from the sat and my working really slowly here okay i'm gonna um mute myself for just a second and make sure my kids are not on streaming because things are moving a little slow um give me two seconds Okay, sorry. <laughs> you all have kids, or lots of you reported you have kids too, so you can understand. <laughs> um, all right, so let me go back and make sure you see. Okay, um, so what I did is I took from that SAT document that is available, and there is um, an SAT alignment for secondary ELA as well. Um, so if you if you are an ELA teacher, um, these resources are available for math and ELA for the SAT. Um, so what I did then is I went through and I just grouped, I just took screenshots. Um, you could copy and paste whatever you're proficient with. Um, I took screenshots of the practice problems that related to this cluster of standards. And the reason that I chose that cluster, just to do as an example, um, and working with some of my other teachers, sorry, let me get you to the right screen here, is if we look at Algebra one, that's my comfort zone for math. Um, if we look at that, I can see that these standards here in the ACED bracket, um, all four of them in that cluster are major standards. They're all essential. Um, and they all have several stars after them. So um, I could say the same thing about these SSE standards here. Um, they're gonna be ones I don't wanna skip. Those are probably the two that stand out the most to me. So I just randomly picked one. Um, so I chose the ACED standards, um, which are creating equations. And I went through, and this is the actual standard from the Common Core. So um, this is the top of that document has what's written in Common Core. It is not friendly language. It is not student-friendly language. Um, and then what I did is I just went through this, the practice problems from the SAT release items to get some handle on what they interpret that standard to mean. Um, so I'm not going to go through all this with you, but and then once I did that, I came up with I can statements. This is where we're trying to get is this idea of turning our essential standards into learning targets for our students and for yourself. But the key is right now in this time of kind of not being able to have relationships in person with our students or having things on a chalkboard, we really want to make sure our students are very clear um, in what they're expected to learn and know and be able to do. Um, so um, we want to make sure that that's, that's kind of what we're headed in this is 
is we want to make sure we're clear in what kids need to learn and be able to do and that it's written in language that they can understand. So I went through and you can see as I scan through here quickly, there's several different categories. Each of these practice tests kind of set these practice questions kind of fell into these different ideas. Um, these different I can statements that became apparent to me of what kids needed to know and be able to do. So where we get from all of this, and this is what I've been working on a lot of schools with, um, is, let me go back. Give me just a second. Um, sorry, my computer's going all over the place to different. Here we go. Um, is to what, what we call the student outcome protocol. And it's loading, there it is. Um, and I realized, let me see, I don't know how the, I can zoom in there for you. Um, so this is a document um, that I worked with um, all four departments. I was an instructional coach in CYFD um, at the juvenile um, detention center for a long time, for two or three years. Um, and I've been working on it with Del Norte High School um, I don't know, we were supposed to have a Del Norte teacher with us today um, from their IC. I don't know if he's here or not, um, Michael. Um, and so this is kind of where we're going to help you with those essential standards. Um, so at the top of the document here, you have the standards again, um, written directly from the Common Core, so we can see that language. And then what I did over here in the left-hand column, um, is I just wrote all of the ICANN statements from that document with the practice test. So it kind of clarified for me, what do my kids need to know with, with regards to those essential standards? Um, and I just put them all, it, they didn't fit in one. So they're all just kind of listed here um, throughout this document for me to get a clear picture of that. Now, ideally, this is all work that I would hope you would do with your department. That as a math team, a social studies team, an English team, you guys are looking at those essential standards um, you're looking at your um, your standardized test. You're looking at um, you know those kinds of things together to make these determinations about these I can statements. Um, you can do it by yourself, but it certainly is a lot easier and less um, less work if you have time during your departments to kind of set this work up. So then in this document, we have an example of rigor. Um, that's what I count as the SAT handout. Like, what exactly does this look like? see those SAT questions. And then we went through um, and talked about like the prerequisite skills. What, um, what do we need in order to be able to do um, that baseline? So this, these I can statements are sort of the baseline. I need to get every kid to this level. And then the prerequisite skills, which is really gonna help with those learning gaps that are caused, that we're seeing from being out of school so long in the spring. So we know kids missed out on something and what kids missed out on varies from kid to kid, coming from class to class, coming from school to school, right? And their home life and what was happening. So if you have a handle on the prerequisite skills they're gonna need for you to get to the baseline data, it's real easy to do some pre-testing, um, to do some introductory stuff during asynchronous or synchronous learning about these skills to say, okay, Here's where I need to fill in the gap so I can get to this point. Um, and then in, a, in the real world, like when we weren't in all this chaos, you'd probably talk with your department about when you're gonna teach these standards. Um, I think right now that's probably not necessarily the most important thing on there. Um, then you guys can have conversations and think about with regards to now you have these learning targets. You know where your kids have to be. You know the building blocks that are gonna get them there. Now, how are you going to know whether they got there or not? Um, and that's, that's another conversation for um, another training, another informational piece. Um, and then you've got these extension standards. This is about the kids who learned it, those kids who've got it and are, are ready to move on. What kinds of things are you going to do with them? Um, those are things that you could look at. Um, you could look at part questions um, for upgrade up levels, like if you're teaching algebra, look at geometry. If you're teaching sixth grade, look at seventh grade questions. Kind of see where they're going with that standard and start building those blocks for the kids that are ready. Because we don't want to just keep them doing the same thing over and over again that they know. Um, and then the ELL scaffolding column is on there. Um, 
when I was working with the juvenile detention center, we had we were working really hard with an ELL population. So we were doing a lot of training on that. Um, but those are the scaffolding pieces that you can put into place um, to do that. So um, this is kind of where essentially where you're going is from the essential standards. This is kind of your next step is creating the student outcome protocol for those essential standards. I use, because math is my background, I use those SAT blueprints and the blueprints from my standardized assessment to be able to help me get to this point. Um, if you um, don't have access to that, um, then you can do it with your department. You can do it if you have to, you can do it based off your experience. Um, but at least something gives you, um, it gives you a focal point. So even if you are working through a specific curriculum, um, if, you're, if you're working through a textbook, if you're using IM, you now have kind of a blueprint um, for what you need in order to stay focused and say, I can't do this section because I'm not gonna have time. Um, we always think of time as teachers. Time is always our biggest enemy. Um, and I think now we, we didn't realize just how, how short of time we were or how much grateful we should have been for our time as we are in this virtual world um, because it's really gonna hamper what we're able to do with our kiddos. So that's kind of the, um, the basis. Um, the big ideas, as I said, I knew in 45 minutes, I wasn't gonna get to a lot of specific details so I wanted to share kind of the overarching process with you guys in this 45 minute time frame, um, and then be able to give you contact information if you wanted more in-depth um, support or help. So um, Jeannie, thank you. She's covering our chat. Cause I was just gonna say, I see a couple of social studies teachers on with us um, and um, we will make sure and take names down um, and get good questions answered. Cause we do have social studies TSSs. Um, for that information. And then um, I see William, any info on the New Mexico ASR for high school juniors? Um, not right now, William, but I see Jeannie shaking her head and, and um, we will certainly find out about that. Um, Rhonda Davis is our best, um, our, our person to ask. So I will find out from her about that as well. Um, but I wanted to kind of make sure I left some time for some questions um, for, additional information. Um, if you want me to go back to anything, let me know. So what what questions? I know that was a lot of information and a little amount of time. So what questions do you guys have um, on any of this or the process that this is that we've used here? And you can just go ahead and unmute yourself if you want to if you have questions. We're a fairly small group. Hi, this is Jamin from Hoover Middle School. Hi, Ms. Damon. Hi. Um, I have a question about something you said early on about that um, eighth grade algebra students would take the PSAT, but I thought they weren't going to do that. I thought they were They're taking not, the They will not this year. That was the original plan before chaos hit. <laughs> um, but what I have heard is that this year they will not. Um, the thought is that once we get back on track, um, that they will go back, that the eighth grade algebra will take the, the ninth grade PSAT. All but right. for this year, they, they will not. So sorry for that. No, that's okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yep. Other questions um, about the process or questions, even if you're not math, um, as, the, as they're coming in, as you saw, Jeannie, we've got social studies coming in. Is there anybody else? Um, have questions non-content that we can get in touch with our counterparts, um, feel free. Um, the other thing I was gonna share with you that has come, um, and actually this is an English example. Um, there is lots of talk around the districts about a district about standards-based grading right now. Um, some people are saying they're being told they have to do standards-based grading. Some people are just wanting to do standards-based grading. Um, so this, it's across the board, but it is certainly um, it is certainly a hot topic right now. Um, and I think that a lot of that is coming from the fact that it's really hard to just keep a regular grade book, to collect worksheets in some way and like PDF them and read them on our phones and all of that kind of stuff is really tricky. 
So we're all looking for ways to assess our students on those essential standards that we really know they're learning what they're supposed to, and it's their own learning. Um, and so this um, was done. I did a book study with a group of teachers this summer um, on standards-based grading. And one of our English teachers created this rubric um, for her um, for her classes, for her English classes. So she's going to grade on a four-point rubric this year. Um, and the reason I bring this up is because this work with the student outcome protocol and creating those ICANN statements um, for the essential standards and having that an idea of the baseline information and where to go with kids after they've learned it, those sort of fast-paced, more advanced kids, really sets you up for being able to create rubrics like this if you are interested in, um, in standards-based grading. So um, it kind of all falls into a process depending on where you are in your learning curve. Um, but I just kind of wanted to point these out because that has become a hot topic and I've gotten a ton of calls on, can you help us with this? We want to use standards-based grading. What does it look like? How do we do it? Um, and, and so what I've been talking to teachers about is really creating that student outcome protocol and creating your learning targets first so you know where kids are headed and then moving into, um, into these um, rubrics where your proficient is your ICANN statement you're developing novice and insufficient are those building blocks to kind of get there and your exemplary are those um, higher level critical thinking skills um, that not everybody's going to get to but some kids will um, so i i wanted to um, i asked my english teacher if she would share because she had done a lot of work this summer on creating these rubrics um, which came from the ican statement so any other um questions Jeannie? are you seeing anything in the chat to address well someone did ask about um the name of the book for the standards-based grading i didn't know it, if you wanted to talk about that or not um it is called grading from the inside out um by tom shimmer so this is what it looks like it's a solution tree book um if you're interested in it it's a um it's one of my favorites i know there are a ton of them but that's the one that um the, that we use um mercy is looking for content learning oh um the modules for sixth grade Jeannie, i believe those are being worked on as we speak or are those the ones that are done so uh, okay. i couldn't remember which order yeah it's so um they because they had third grade and sixth grade to do so they finished third grade and they are currently working on sixth grade um just you know creating that module as an example so they um they should be out mercy i i would say probably pretty with within the week or next week at the latest i would imagine i i don't yeah, want to put I that on them for sure but <laughs> <laughs> um i would say just check back on the the tln hub website is where we kind of have everything housed and i would just check back there um within the next week or so all right other um other questions um for me. We have about nine minutes if we need it. I'm not going to keep you if we don't. <laughs> um, I can stay on if anybody has any individual questions. I'm certainly willing um, to stay on. Um, I know Jeannie there is, yep, she's got it in there. Um, is, I'm assuming that's the feedback form. Um, so yeah, it's well, been... Since this is yeah, since this is the end of the day, if you have not filled out a survey, this is just one for the end of the day to kind of help us with the next summit to make it better as we, you know, get through all the pumps and bumps as we do. Um, so if you could take just a couple of minutes and fill that out for us so we can make sure that we address anything that you need for next time. Um, and you all, at the beginning, if you logged on um, a little bit um, after 3.15, um, and you scroll back up to the top of the comment, the chat, Jeannie did post um, the link to this, um, my Bitmoji classroom. Um, and each of the links are, they're all linked in there. So if you just download my Bitmoji classroom, um, you should be able to click on if you need the essential standards document or any of those example documents. Um, and my email is there. Um, so if you have any questions, oh, there it is again, if you missed it at the beginning. Um, thanks, Jeannie. Um, if you have any questions about any of this or you want 
um, more work. Um, if you want support in your department working on this or um, uh, individually, just let us know. Um, like I said, if you're not math, you can shoot me an email and we can um, set you up with the TSS in your content um, to help you out however you need it. Any other questions? I just wanted to let everybody know as well, just in case you haven't heard already, um, all the recordings from today's sessions will be up on our YouTube channel, which you can link through the hub on the homepage as well as on the TLF resources. So that way you can share the information, use the information, show it to others, whatever it is that you need to do. Yep, or if you missed the session from today because of class or anything like that, you can go back and watch them all. All right, I will hang out for a few minutes. If anybody wants to hang out and ask any questions, please feel free. Um, otherwise, we thank you guys so much for your time today. Um, I know you're in a tough position right now in this role of TLF, um, but please know that you're valued and respected. Um, and we wanna help you guys any way we can. So um, let us know what we can do to help you guys out. And enjoy your afternoon. Um, Teresa, I have a question real quick, if you don't mind. Yeah, no, not I, at all. I'm Bill Seifert from Siegel High School. I teach science. And you know, all science teachers here are using Edgenuity. And I noticed that a lot of other, a few other schools are using Edgenuity. And we cover way more than the NGSS is gonna assess them on. If they do the ASR in springtime, um, do you have any thoughts or ideas or anything? I guess the question I have is, when, do they have any ideas about the ASR coming through for springtime or not? Um, I do not know. Um, for the the ASR, um, let's see, our secondary is, that's Amy, no. Yeah, Amy Chase is our secondary science person, I think. So I let me texted, get. I, I texted um, Heather. Actually, I think Eric is our secondary. Um, oh, is Eric secondary? Okay. Yeah, whenever I get some kind of information on that, I will go ahead and email you um, and just let you know um, whatever it is that I find out. <laughs> and then that way that'll also connect you to them as well in case you have any additional questions. Yeah, I, I met those two. I, I met them. Um, and anyway, but Edgenuity is a great pro. I mean, I like the content, but it is a lot more than what we even require. So it's, it's interesting that it, it APS, but anyways, uh, that was my question. Well, and the other, um, the other person, um, who is part of assessment um, is that is Rhonda Davis. Um, and she is a great resource as far as the assessment piece of it. Um, she's math by trade also, but um, she is always a wealth of information with regards to what's coming, what's going, who's doing what, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, so um, she's another one that if you don't get your questions answered, um, you can reach out to her um, and ask any science questions of her as well. Well, do you think an Edgenuity question about content and standards with Edgenuity would be a CNI question? Yes. <laughs> or Academy. I mean, Academy um, is separate. Sorry, last night. Um, Eric, my um, yes, we are all learning Edgenuity, to be perfectly honest with you. Edgenuity is new to most of us in CNI. Um, and so we are kind of learning Edgenuity with all of you because of this virtual learning. It has just come around. Um, so I know that would be a question for your science team mm -hmm. because they know your NGSS standards better than, than I do. Um, and they may have some information. If not, the nice thing is they have a, a different function of time to maybe find the answers to your questions than you do as a classroom teacher dealing with, you know, with your stuff each day. Okay. No, I, I again, I, the content for physics and ingenuity is really well done. So I, I, that's all. I'm glad to hear that. That's that's great feedback to hear um, because most of the edgenuity we're hearing about is um, is at the elementary level, um, and I use edgenuity or I had kids use edgenuity for math in a previous school, um, and for math, it, it was not great. So <laughs> I'm glad there's good parts of it out there. 